Somebody's dropped some salami on this couch. A lot of salami. I have had a junk food day. <laughs> it's killing me already. <laughs> oh, today was so fun. I, it didn't go according to plan at all. But <laughs> I mean, all of my best days never really do anyway, so it's fine. But yeah, so I had the plan of, I was gonna go to the Natural History Museum, which I did, that part went according to plan. That was the first time that I found like I said, I found it straight away really quickly, which was really exciting because almost all the other times I've gone looking for a tourist destination, I just, I can't find the attraction at all. There's like hardly any signposts. The signposts here, like the street signs and everything is teeny tiny and right on the corner and up like two stories. So, I mean, half the time I forget to bring my glasses anyway, so I can't actually read it, but even if I didn't need to wear glasses to see, nobody can see that. It's teeny tiny, it's right up there, and and there's very, very few things in English. Like, if you actually get to the location, and like, if you actually get to the door of a museum that you're trying to go into, and you get right up close to the door, then it'll have, you know, museum in, obviously, the name of it in uh, Finnish and then underneath in Swedish and then it may, if you're lucky, have it in like tiny little letters at the bottom in English. But if you're looking for like this way to whatever, this way to this art gallery, this way to this museum in, in English, no, there's just none of that at all. <laughs> and uh, Google Maps has not been helpful particularly because yeah, I thought I was going in the right direction for a bunch of different stuff and then it was just like, Oh, you're like in the middle of a field now. Well done. I'm like, why did you tell me to go this way? <sighs> Recalculating. Heck off. So yeah. <laughs> but no. Oh my god, the Natural History Museum. I can't believe that I I almost didn't go to this one because I was like, ah, oh, I've been to loads of natural history museums. It's probably all the same. It's all stuffed animals, right? It was so good. I I'm gonna do a blog post about it as well. It's a separate thing. Um, because I really do think it was brilliant and also I'm gonna say something very very controversial which some of you may hate me for in the comments but I actually think that this particular natural history museum in some ways is better than a lot of zoos and that sounds really weird because I love animals and obviously I prefer them if they're alive and, and happy and everything uh, and the natural history museum they're all either skeletons or stuffed <laughs> um, but my point is, when you go to zoos, uh, you're so excited, I'm going to see red pandas, I'm so excited to see the red pandas, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like see their cute little faces and them like eating the food and, and playing and oh, it's going to be amazing. And then you get to the zoo and you can't see the red pandas. There may, there's a red panda display, you can see their enclosure and you can see the trees and maybe if you're very very lucky you'll see the glimpse of a tail. But I mean, for little kids and I mean for myself as well, I was like, I totally understand that they need a lovely big enclosure, I totally understand they need the foliage and everything to recreate their habitat, but I can't really see them. and. It doesn't feel like, you know, you get the sense when you're watching nature documentaries and things, you, you get the sense of what they're going to look like. But it's totally different seeing them actually up close. I mean, I worked in a zoo for a little while and it is very different to see an animal up close. But if you're just visiting zoos and things, you don't really get that experience the vast majority of the time. If you're really lucky, then maybe like the lion will come out to the glass or something and it's amazing. Um, but it's rare, it's rare. and. And also with zoos, I find 
I, I, I do, I find that they're a very important part of our lives, of our culture and everything to educate the public about um, extinction and everything, about uh, habitat destruction and um, why we need to protect these amazing animals. A lot of the time you need to see them to understand why we should be protecting them. I do think zoos are important. However, I also do kind of get a bit of a sad feeling when I'm in zoos because I'm like, ah, these animals should be in the wild. They should not have to deal with a whole bunch of snot-nosed kids sticking their noses up against the windows and tapping on the glass and everything. You know, they, they deserve to be in the vast expanse of the savannah or the forest or wherever it is they're from. My whole point is the Natural History Museum, you can get so up close to these animals and I know they're dead but you can see every whisker every hair in such beautiful detail it's like it should be narrated by David Attenborough it's it was amazing I'm never gonna get close to a grizzly bear in my life but I did today I looked a grizzly bear in its weird glass eyes and these ones I mean, this is probably one of the best natural history museums i've ever been to and i've been to a lot <laughs> because i am a nerd yeah this one was just amazing because it did have so much attention to detail they were all in these beautiful tableaus where you know it looked like a scene from a nature documentary that had been paused they'd taken all this time and effort to get the right foliage in there and all these little tiny little details where you know they had bugs on the ground and birds in the air and it just it was really good and i personally think that um a child especially would really appreciate this they might be a bit like oh it's it's dead but also you can learn from that as well like you can see so much more than if you would than if they were alive moving around in the zoo miles away hiding from the public because you know they don't want to be poked at or whatever um, this way you can get super up close and see everything every element of the animal and learn so much as well there was so much information there um, and yeah most of it was uh, Finnish, Swedish and English as well so it kind of accommodates an awful lot of people which is really good. Um, I, I just really liked this one, I personally thought it was really great and I think I'll probably do a blog post kind of arguing my point of why I think some natural history museums might be a bit better than some zoos. That's not a generalisation, not all of them, like I say rescue zoos I think are very important and very needed but yes <laughs> and uh, so I had a really really good experience there again got in free with my uh, museum card as well so this was really fun this was my third day of using my museum card so I still have four days left to do loads more and I've, I don't even have that much money left and as I was leaving I was just like oh I'm gonna go home now and then right over the road I was like, that's another museum. I didn't even know that that one was there. And I had a look and it's the Ham Art Museum, which contains a load of artwork from just Finnish artists, um, both old and new. So yeah, I went in there and it had a bunch of contemporary work and uh, like some like classic stuff, but sometimes you had to buy a ticket to get into certain areas. Uh, and I don't think my museum card allowed me access to all areas. Um, which was a bit meh, but don't mind. I didn't have that much time anyway because I had to get back here to feed Zoe. But yeah, so uh, that one was really cool and it turns out that it is also a cinema in there like, and a series of themed escape rooms as well. So this building is like a multi-purpose building. It has like a little art gallery in it and it's also got a massive ass cinema and escape rooms which I kind of really want to do but they're a group thing and I don't have any friends over here really yet so <laughs> I'm a bit weird me just going by myself um, <laughs> to an escape room however whilst I was there I had a good look around to see everything and uh, the smell of popcorn overwhelmed me there was so much delicious popcorn so i bought some <laughs> i bought some popcorn and literally just walked home eating it it was so good i was really pleased uh i also got some more postcards again i bought like 
think about nine postcards now and haven't sent a one of them off yet. I do collect them and I put them in my scrapbooks. So, uh, but I am intending to send at least one postcard home to my folks. <laughs> if, I, if I get around to it, I keep forgetting and I'm enjoying myself too much. I'm not thinking about you guys at home. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I really enjoyed today. And uh, tomorrow, I, I still have um, the observatory to do because I didn't do it today. And the botanical gardens, the photography museum, the design museum, and then the open air museum, which is about, it's, it's on its own little island and it's um, traditional Finland. And people dress up in elderworldly clothes and uh, there's like traditional open air crafts and all that sort of thing. I, I think that sounds amazing. Uh, my museum card will get me in there for free as well. And uh, and the, the Sea Fort Museum as well. Um, those ones I know off the top of my head are definitely ones that I do still want to do. And I think that's doable. Like <laughs> how many did I just list off? And I have another four days, it's probably doable. Especially since I managed to do two more today. And the first day I did three because I got up early. So I think if I get up early again, I can certainly knock a few more down in one day. <laughs> Honestly, the, the biggest issue is just finding where stuff is because like I say, the road signs are just confusing as hell and nothing is particularly well signposted. And like if you go to London or something or many other major European cities, they'll have like public uh, maps and things like that so, and with like a you are here sticker and everything so you can work out where the hell you are not here no they're, they're, uh, I've had three separate occasions where people have come up to me and said do you know where this is asking for directions and I'm like I'm sorry I'm not even from here myself and even if I was I probably wouldn't be able to help you because nobody knows where anything is here you ask so many different things and they're just like I'm sorry I have no idea what that is and, I don't even know what that is that you've just referenced. I'm <laughs> like, I know, right? <laughs> so complicated, but never mind. Um, right, I've been waffling on for a while. Uh, I have no particular plan for tomorrow because like I say, each time I plan to go to a particular area, I very rarely actually end up in it. So I think I will have a loose area of like head towards a, a group of tourist attractions that I want to do tomorrow and then see where I end up because it will probably be completely in the wrong direction but uh, hey that's part of the fun of it isn't it <laughs> thank you so much for watching liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the world bye